Hello, and welcome to uh, the first uh, edition of Not New Reviews. I'm Shelley McBallinger, and this is my blog slash channel that I started to um, promote not only my creative friends um, and myself, but also the books and music that inspired us. Um, and so today I'm going to be talking to you about The Piper at the Gates of Dawn. Um, not Pink Floyd's. Uh, although I love this CD and it's funny because um, there's something about it that it always resonated with me, although I didn't listen to it until I was in my 20s. Um, but there's something about the name that just always got to me. I could never really like put my hands on what it was, but there was something special about it. Um, and not even uh, the novella by Richard Cowper, which actually is what led me back to the original that I'm going to be talking about today. I do highly recommend uh, the novella Piper at the Gates of Dawn by Richard Cowper if you enjoy uh, kind of the, that 1970s uh, genre of uh, science fiction -y, fantasy post-apocalyptic. Um, it's It takes place in uh, Britain slash Ireland. After the polar ice caps have melted, he actually has a whole lot of kind of post-environmental collapse stuff that feels actually very relevant today. Um, and in Piper at the Gates of Dawn, you have a young man who, uh, when he plays a song on the pipes, he can transport you to anywhere. And when I first read that, I was like, wow, this is really like, this is right at my alley. And I read it as part of my creative writing program because um, that's one of my, my themes. My tagline for my writing is, I write ekphrastic novels about songs. Uh, music is a major theme in my work and not just music itself, but the way it, it transforms and releases and, and connects us not only to each other, but to the, the great whatever universal hum song uh, there is that is us beyond ourselves, right? Um, so I was like, this is this is the book, this is really that connection. Um, but there was something about the title, Piper at the Gates of Dawn. And um, I looked it up and that uh, finally led me back to Kenneth Graham's When in the Willows. And I realized uh, that who I became as a writer was pretty much formed about second grade. Like, I don't ever remember not wanting to be a writer. I'm pretty sure I was, I was born. Like, even before I could read, I'm pretty sure I wanted to be a writer. Uh, the first book I read by myself was Green Eggs and Ham. Uh, but I'm pretty sure it was the, the Piper at the Gates of Dawn chapter in Wind in the Willows that um, crystallized for me the type of writer I want to be. And the way I realized this is not because I remembered it, because this was nine years ago, I'm super old now. Uh, but when I was rereading this, it brought me back to that, you know, seven year old place in my mind. And I remembered reading this for the first time and being overtaken by this sense of awe and beauty and an awareness that there is some intangible magic that uh, is pervasive throughout the world, whether we see it or not, and that we have such a capacity for beauty um, and transcendence and that nothing is as terrible as it sometimes seem, seems. Um, and so I just wanna read just a couple of, of snippets. The writing here is really beautiful. Kenneth Graham, uh, the author, he has a very tragic story. Um, he, he was, uh, his son had a lot of mental health issues in addition to being born blind and ultimately committed suicide. And the Wind in the Willows stories um, were the stories that he used to kind of tell his son um, and they kind of enlivened everything. And there's a part of me as somebody who studied Yeats that wonders if maybe they were all studying some of the, the Golden Dawn stuff um, that maybe Graham studied some of Yates' Golden Dawn stuff because there's some similar themes. Um, so just a couple of things. Uh, so if you're unfamiliar with the story, 
mole and rat are uh, looking for portly, uh, a baby otter, and they find portly at the feet of Pan, uh, who is the piper at the gates of dawn. And they have this amazing transcendent experience watching the sun come up around Pan when they suddenly have that sense that I had as a child that there's so much more to the world. And it's amazing, sudden magnificent, the sun's broad golden dish showed itself over the horizon facing them. And the first rays shooting across the level water meadows took the animals full in the eyes and dazzled them. When they were able to look once more, the vision had vanished and the air was full of the carol of birds that hailed the dawn. Um, but then the thing that Pan does is he he makes them forget. And this idea that you would have this mystical, amazing experience and then have to forget it, and then that would that would draw that would pull at the back of your mind and shape how you see the world without you really understanding why it shapes that. Um, I actually see that theme really show up in the sequel to uh, the Gods of Lafayette that I'm currently working on right now. And it wasn't until I went back, just serendipitously, found my way back to the story that I realized where that came from. Um, and then at the end of the scene, you know, after Mole and Rat have, have forgotten Pan. They're heading home and they know something has happened, but not what. And they're listening to the wind in the reeds. And in literature, there's this whole thing where there's this idea that you can't see the wind, but you can see its effect, you know, kind of like the spirit or that intangible thing or what people think of as the gods or, or whatever higher connected thing they think of. You can't see it, but you can see its effect, right? And the wind is often the symbol for that. Um, and so they're listening to the wind move through the reeds and Rat can hear it and it's like music, faraway music. Um, and, and Rat can kind of make out the words. He's turning it into words, faint but clear. Um, and he's giving it to uh, Mole in a way that Mole can understand. And I think that for me, like that's the dream and the function of art that we're all just listening to the wind and the reeds and as artists and giving it back to the world in the way um, that other people uh, can hear what we've heard. So uh, I look forward to uh, seeing your contributions and seeing your comments and uh, welcome to Not New Reviews. <laughs>